Um, yeah, we uh, updated the um, graphical user interface a little bit. As you can see, we don't have our tool wheel anymore. So if you right click now in the software, uh, it will be a, a standard context menu. Um, and also uh, what you could probably see here uh, in the screenshot, um, this is the button for the system menu. It's not um, horizontal uh, orientated anymore. It's a vertical um, system menu, as you know from many other softwares. Um, and yeah, context menu will be available for tool positioning, uh, um, pin su uh, support pins, and production options. Um, also new in the software, uh, no matter where you are in the software, you always will be able to go back to your uh, blank database. Um, here in the um, blue uh, frame. And this uh, enables the user to open up a new job in the same application while one other job is probably milling on one of the machines. So if you start a new job, you don't have to uh, open up the in-lab software twice or three times. You just go back to the blank database, open up that software, or open up a new job without uh, opening up a new application of the in-lab software or the CAM software. Um, also new, and this is uh, more um, for tech support, but uh, also for you if uh, there's uh, a problem, for example, with a case, um, we have that support.zip uh, file already in the CAD software so since InLab uh, 15, and now we have added the same functionality um, to the CAM software. Uh, it's the same icon, and so if a user has a problem with the case, uh, today it's it's very uh, yeah complex or hard to know where all uh, the files that we need for or to analyze the case to uh, get all the files and zip them together uh, in the future with CAM16 this will be just one click and it will create all necessary information for tech support or for R&D in Bensheim to analyze what could be or what is the problem with the uh, with this. Uh, job or uh, with this case. Um, the legend has improved a little bit. Um, now all uh, restorations are uh, shown in their particular jobs. So not only a list of all milled restorations from that disk is shown in the legend as also information available which job a certain restoration was milled in. Uh, also uh, information uh, about the dentist, the patient, and all necessary other information is now available in the um, in the new legend. And um, the legend uh, can be uh, opened either in the start screen directly or in the produce phase. So if you just want to take a look at the at, at the legend, you have you don't have to open. Uh, that uh, a puck you can directly click in the start screen and open uh, the legend if you want. Step ahead into the collect phase. What's, what is new here? Um, first of all, we are now able to import multiple in-lab files with just one click. You can select them by using uh, control click. So you highlight all the cases and you click on open and they will be imported into the software with a certain workflow. So you start with the first case and under uh, restoration you will see how many files you are importing. In this case it's just one out of one. If it would be more uh, you would have written there like one out of three or number two out of three or whatever. Um, and then you enter the uh, additional information um, like uh, what kind of uh, indication it is. In this case, obviously, it's a bridge. Um, and let me just f finish this. And once you have entered all the information and you click on additional information um, uh, and you enter the margin and you arrow forward, and then you will go back 
um, to the next restoration here. So it's now uh, a very easy to handle workflow to import multiple SDL files. And if these files, uh, for example, are um, together with XML additional information like the 3OX or the construction info from ExoCAD, um, of course, uh, information like margin, um, indication, and all this information is pre-filled, and it really streams uh, streamlines the workflow for uh, importing multiple STL cases. Um, also new in this software, and I think this is a <clears throat> very important uh, improvement to the CAM software, um, the software has now a tool where you can um, determine the, the screw channel. So it's uh, when you're importing um, an STL abutment. In the past, um, we didn't have any information about the screw channel. And today, um, there is uh, a tool available where you can mark, uh, let's say, the rim or the, the outline um, of the screw hole. And the software then knows exactly where um, the screw channel is. As you can see here in the upper left screenshot, you can see um, the line. And with this line, the software is able uh, to determine where the screw channel is. Uh, you can enter this line uh, either using the auto function or, uh, of course, also manually. Um, and if you um, import, for example, an abutment um, together with XML information, um, then the screw channel will be detected automatically. So you don't have to enter um, this line in these cases. Um, this also works now for multiple unit cases. For example, this uh, bridge here, um, it is uh, um, together on implants and uh, regular preparations. So um, this will also work in the future much better than it was today. Um, you can either uh, mark the margins manually or if you have XML information available, um, this information will be uh, taken from the XML file and you don't have to enter any additional information or you have to enter or you don't have to enter um, the margin in this case. Um, that's what I said already. We have updated or improved this uh, XML um, import a lot. Um, additional info uh, which is stored in the STL data is now available in the software like patient name, dentist, tooth numbers, insertion axes, screw channels, restoration type, and um, still available or still possible for, for three shape uh, XML information which are called 3OX or ExoCAD XML information, which is called construction info. Um, of course, uh, even so the data is uh, integrated in the XML file, there's always the possibility to manually um, edit the case if it's needed. Um, this particular bridge, which, I, which I've shown before already, uh, we have also uh, 3OX information available. So if you import this bridge, all the information about the screw channel or the margins that you see on the preparations, um, you don't have to enter. They, they will be uh, taken from the XML information that comes with that file. Um, another very neat feature and a, let's say, a unique selling preposition for, for the in-lab CAM software um, we are able to read the QR code which is uh, uh, attached either to the disk or to the uh, package of the disk. We can read it with a webcam and enter the information automatically if you um, enter a new disk to the CAM software. So um, as you can see here, um, if a webcam is attached to the uh, PC, there will be uh, the button scan blank available and if you click on that it will automatically uh, activate the webcam and you can scan the QR code with it. 
um, if there is no webcam attached to the um, PC, this button will not show up in the software as long as you don't have any webcam uh, attached to it. And uh, yeah, this is uh, available for our Serona disks at the moment for the PMMA guide, the CI, TCI, TCIC or CCB disks. Um, as I said, uh, the, bar uh, the, the QR code is either on the package of the, the, of the puck or, um, and you hold the, the um, QR code uh, just in front of the uh, uh, webcam and it reads the information um, either on the packaging or on the disk as you can see here and it enters uh, all information uh, for this disk, disk automatically into your blank database. Um, there are some requirements uh, or recommendations uh, for webcams that are able to do this. Uh, you can see here the requirements and I'm pretty sure that you get uh, this presentation anyway so don't, we don't have to go through all these uh, technical details. There are some examples which webcams um, are definitely working. Um, so these ones uh, we have tested on our own and it works. Um, I have one at my desk to be honest which is not working because it's too old um, for this but um, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of webcams out there that meet these requirements and can be used if a customer is using our disks. As I said this is something unique for our disk at the moment so none of our material partners has this QR code uh, on their disk or on their packaging so far um, so um, this will only be possible if a user is using the Serona disks at the moment. Um, we have a free text search uh, in our um, search window integrated so if you are searching for a particular puck or a particular block and you don't and you have a long list or you don't know where it is you can uh, type in um, any kind of uh, information uh, whether it's the manufacturer or the ID um, of the disk material whatever and the software will show you a list um, of potential uh, results uh, based on your entry in the search window. Um, we also have entered now um, a layered zirconium oxide disk which is based on the layering of the Noritake Katana disk. So um, you will not find Noritake at the moment as a material brand in the software but if a user wants to use this disk um, he can use uh, the zirconium oxide multi-layer from the miscellaneous selection and the layering in this um, disk uh, is based on the katana layering so um, it's pretty easy to use um, as I can as you can see here in the next slide uh, it will show up um, or it will show all the different shades of the layers in in the puck then and the user can um, position the restoration according to his needs. Okay, step over to the arrange phase. Um, some minor changes, the screw channels uh, will be displayed or the screw holes will be displayed in the restoration for better orientation. I think for some um, uh, abutments this was not the case uh, in the past so this gives a little bit better orientation when you want to position um, restorations uh, based on implants in a puck. Um, also there's less limitations uh, in terms of positioning or rotation of the abutments. Uh, today it's only possible to flip them by 180 degrees. In the future there's more freedom um, to rotate um, these restorations. Also the sprues will stay at their particular position even so you reposition the restoration itself uh, in your disk as you can see on the right this was the proposed or this was the first positioning of the uh, of the abutment and the proposed uh, uh, pins 
and then we repositioned the uh, abutment a little more to the right in the puck, uh, but still the spruce are at their position where they were before. Um, also, um, I think a very good improvement here, we are now able to position um, restorations or crowns, for example, in the sintering support so we don't lose that material anymore. We can still put um, at least one or two or three um, copings or crowns in that area um, in order to uh, use that material more efficient uh, than we are using this today. Um, still there will be uh, the, the frame with the defined thickness uh, milled out from uh, from the machine but the remaining material in the middle um, there is uh, space to position other restorations now and this will be available uh, available as well for zirconium oxide and our sintering metal. Um, we have also more flexibility when it comes to uh, positioning restorations and this is also related to the um, multi-layer disc which I was talking about a couple of slides before. Um, so not only positioning horizontal and vertical um, direction is possible now, it's also poss possible to rotate or tilt the restoration in the puck uh, and therefore you can see we have uh, rotate available now in the tool side panel and in you, if you click on that, um, you will have the possibility to um, rotate or tilt, uh, for example, a bridge uh, in the puck. Uh, for example, if you have a restoration with a, a large or high uh, curve of speed, for example, you can reposition this from the initial positioning in order to use a thinner disc or smaller disc in order not to waste too much material or burr uh, uh, wear or burr usage. Um, so this is now possible with uh, CAM16. Also for the blocks, as you can see on the right side, uh, this feature is available. Of course for the MCXL not all rotations are possible because we are only having a four axis machine there. Uh, but uh, if it comes to the M6-5, all possible rotations are now available for these restorations. Um, and now we are coming to a, what I call a more advanced feature uh, for customers. Uh, we are able to optimize or minimize undercuts in a restoration. So after the initial positioning, of a restoration in the puck, um, you can edit the axis of, let's say, milling or minimize the undercuts by clicking on this um, new tool here and then the software will optimize um, the milling to remove undercuts and if there are remaining undercuts, they will be shown um, in the restoration or on the restoration, this is, you can see it here. We have our uh, well-known color scheme available in, um, in the CAM software. And um, that shows the user, uh, depending on what uh, angle he has chosen or what position he has chosen in the software, um, where are remaining undercuts based on the milling directions. And you can also see um, new um, arrows going up and down uh, from the restoration and the user has now the option to adjust the milling or the path of milling how the tool goes into um, the restoration uh, either from the outside uh, or for the outside and of course for the intaglio. Um, this is possible. And depending on how he uh, adjusts or edits um, these axes, um, he can remove more undercuts or can decide, well, I want to remove all undercuts 
uh, in, in, on that molar um, element and I live with some remaining undercuts uh, on that premolar element which he then takes uh, out uh, with his handpiece after milling. Um, this uh, minimizing undercut feature um, is also uh, very important if it comes, uh, for example, um, to milling of bite splints, for example. Um, this uh, feature can be used here as well, for example, as you can see in the middle. Um, the initial proposal or the initial position has undercuts um, on the splint, on the intaglio of the splint, and uh, after optimizing these undercuts, most of these undercuts can be taken out by the software during the milling, and which undercuts are still remaining. Um, the software shows the user. Um, he, of course, can adjust with the arrow. Uh, if, if there's more undercuts, he can adjust it uh, in order to try to get out more of these undercuts. And, of course, uh, after the milling, he can take them out with the handpiece. Um, then we have, um, uh, this is not a new feature to be honest, this is uh, more, um, uh, let's say, fixing a bug uh, in the software because in InLab 15 um, it was not possible to attach um, the pins, the support pins for milling to the gingiva element and um, since we're seeing more and more of these restorations done by our users, this is, I think, very important for them um, because you're now able to um, attach the, um, the pins to the gingiva element. And thanks to uh, our new uh, minimize undercut feature and some other uh, improvements uh, on the milling paths, um, we get a lot better milling results for these cases as well, especially on the anterior uh, area, uh, the undercuts are taken away much better than we do it today with inlet 15. So uh, I think also for these cases, this is a very big uh, improvement uh, in CAM 16. Since, uh, as I said, uh, labs are doing more and more uh, of these cases and uh, of course they're earning a lot of money uh, with them, so uh, it's it's very helpful for them if the milling result gets better and better from every version. Um, if it comes to multi-block jobs, uh, we are now able to use the 90 degree position of that multi-block holder. It's position 8. Um, if you remember on the multi-block holder, um, it's not possible in lab, uh, in, in lab 15 or CAM15, but it's um, possible now. Uh, and also, uh, it's possible to do more than one bridge uh, in a multi-block job. Um, right now, it's only possible to put a, a multi-block uh, or a, a bridge blank in position 5 on the multi-block holder. Um, and with CAM16, <coughs> um, you can put uh, bridge blocks in every position if you like or um, as many as you need and put some other uh, smaller restorations in the remaining open positions on the multi-block holder. Um, we have the production options um, improved so there is more flexibility for um, the user the old production qu uh, quality feature, which was rough, fine, or extra fine, um, was connected between what kind of instruments are used with that strategy and what machining mode in terms of fast milling, normal milling, uh, and so on. Uh, this was connected uh, in the uh, production quality feature, and now um, this is di disconnected. Uh, so the user has more flexibility in using strategies in terms of speed, uh, movement, uh, and uh, usage of instruments. 
Um, this will be available, of course, for M6L and M6V, um, uh, depending on what kind of machine you're having. Um, not all of the uh, six options that you have on the right uh, will be available for M6L. It will be just four, meaning two detail level uh, options and two machining mode options for the M6-5, uh, all three detail level and machining mode options are available and this is also available for grinding and milling. Um, if we look to the detail level, what does that mean with uh, CAM-16? Uh, detail level always determines what kind of instrument uh, will be used for uh, milling the restoration. For example, if you, have, if you choose the detail more, uh, level very high, all three instruments uh, for milling, for example, will be used um, to mill out that restoration. Um, if you're choosing high, only the 2.5 and the 1 millimeter tool will be used. And if you uh, select low, only the 2.5 millimeter instrument will be used for mill, to mill out that restoration. Um, of course, depending on what detail level you choose, uh, it will affect um, the manufacturing time um, of the instrument. And of course, depending on what machining mode um, you are choosing, this, uh, depending on the selection, adds also um, milling time to the user. Um, what does it mean, the different mach machining modes? Um, it determines, uh, for example, speed, the number of the individual machining strategies, uh, the feed, uh, and some other um, uh, strategy uh, things uh, will be determined with these machining modes. For example, the fast mode, uh, we, will, uh, we have a, a really fast milling, but for example, um, with the soft mode or the the actual name of the software will be gentle. Um, we have a, a special uh, milling or remilling of the margins. Um, this will be, uh, for example, skipped with the fast mode. And um, of course, the recommendation for fast is if you don't have any critical areas in your restoration, you have probably uh, a very thick coping. For example, you can easy, easily use the fast mode for it. Um, or if you have a really uh, thin coping, but uh, uh, there's no occlusion, it's just a coping, um, you can uh, now select the soft machining mode or the gentle machining mode, but still you are able to select the low detail level, so the software will only use uh, the 2.5 millimeter instrument, but still has a um, low speed because uh, of the soft machining mode, and um, yeah, um, takes care of uh, critical areas, thin margins, and uh, of course the quality uh, will also be different compared to the other modes. So there's um, a lot of new combinations uh, available for users depending on what kind of restoration they are going to mill. Um, and in the produce phase, uh, you select the um, uh, desired restoration uh, where you want to uh, add a certain milling strategy on it. If you want to change um, the strategy for all restorations in the, uh, on the disk on that job, uh, you can uh, click Control A uh, or you use uh, Control and click just some of them if you don't want to change it for all restorations and the batch will always show uh, what, uh, what strategy is applied to that particular restoration. Um, hopefully the batches are very clear. Uh, detail level um, is shown um, in the middle and uh, what kind of machining mode will be used. It's color coded. Um, so it should be very easy for the user uh, to understand what uh, strategy he is applying um, to the particular restoration. Um, this can also be done by right-click. Um, 
selecting the different um, detail levels and machining modes. Um, we are uh, improving also um, the milling of the pins or the, the, center, uh, the support pins. As you can see in the middle, um, this is how we do it today. There's still some remaining material under the pin uh, on the restoration, which uh, makes it sometimes quite hard to uh, access this area with your uh, instrument and take the restoration out of the puck. Um, new with CAM16, you can see it on the, uh, on the right side. We are milling away as much material as we can, so this should be much easier in the future um, to access this area with your handpiece to take the restoration out. And on the, right, uh, on the left side you can see a result and you can see there's also a new parameter available uh, for the pins or for the, for the sprue tapering. Um, there is a parameter where you can uh, select whether you want to have sprue tapering only one millimeter or you want to have sprue tapering um, uh, for 2.5 millimeters, uh, which makes it, of course, easier um, to uh, get access with your handpiece uh, to the pins and take the restorations out. Um, this will be available under job parameters um, and of course uh, the software remembers um, the setting here so once you have changed that to one or the other um, number uh, it will remember that for the upcoming jobs as well. Uh, coming to the MCXL for a, a moment, um, in the past um, our meso blocks, the zirconium oxide or PMMA meso blocks, um, even so we had milling available on the MCXL, um, they were uh, grinded, whereas CAM16 um, these uh, blocks can also be milled, so for uh, Serona, uh, CI meso, TCI meso, uh, the Vita and the Ivoclar uh, materials, um, the user can now mill this. We have that single pin process available for the abutment so that, that you don't have to take away um, too much spruce uh, from your abutment later on to get the restoration out of the remaining um, blank. Um, milling abutments on the MCX-5 um, was possible um, with zirconium oxide in InLab 15 uh, or CAM 15. Now it's also possible for PMMA and composite, material, composite materials. Um, we improved the spindle touch uh, for for the next remaining materials, so almost all glass ceramic blocks will be touched before uh, the milling or the grinding process starts. Um, you can you see uh, uh, the list on the left on the right side, um, which of these uh, materials will be touched. So um, yeah, this um, makes it a little bit more secure that the user is not uh, using the wrong block size for restoration and destroys the instrument or uh, uh, punches the block from the holder uh, or whatever problems this uh, they, they have there has been in the in the past. Um, it's still uh, the way that we uh, touch mill touch mill so. Um, there is no, if you have multiple blocks in the holder, um, it's not the way that it first touches all blocks and then starts milling um, because we don't have enough uh, memory in the machine available to store this, this information. So if you have more than one block in the, um, in the multi-block holder, it will, it will touch the first block, then it will mill the first block, then it will touch the uh, second block and then it will mill the second block and so on and so on. So users might uh, might be a little bit 
uh, not really concerned, but they probably ask for it. And uh, the reason why it is like that, we don't have enough storage at the moment in the machine to save all that uh, information uh, on the machine for the complete job. Um, something new um, in uh, before you start your production, we have a step available which is called uh, check instruments, and um, this is this we have done because we want to have more failure-proof uh, processes or procedures, um, and this helps the customer uh, to check uh, if the right instruments are inserted or the right tray is inserted before he actually starts the process and then the machine or the software prompts him to change um, the instrument magazine, for example, then he moves, uh, walks back and forth between the machine and the computer. Uh, so it's uh, um, a pretty good workflow now. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, the screen that will be pulled up. Once you clicked on that step, uh, you can see what, what kind of blank has to be inserted also, if it's uh, 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 already used blank, you can see it. So it's uh, very obvious for the user which kind of blank he has to use and what, what, uh, what restorations are on there, uh, which tool magazine is actually inserted in the machine or what has to be uh, inserted into the machine, uh, what is the remaining lifetime of the instruments in that particular magazine so everything can be checked prior to start um, the job. Uh, it's also possible in that uh, step that you can add a tray or change a tray. Uh, you can add or change tools and of course uh, you confirm all the information before you start. So um, just uh, a very streamlined workflow now for the user before he actually starts the process um, to check uh, all his instruments, uh, to check if the right tray is or the right magazine is uh, inserted into the, into the machine. And once he starts the job, um, the user gets an information screen uh, which shows him what instrument needs to be inserted, what blank uh, needs to be put into the um, machine, and um, he has to he checks this and can skip this, and so hopefully um, the user does everything right before he wants to start the job in order to show everything. And down there, you can see uh, there is a, um, a sentence. It's, uh, it says, please make sure that the correct tank is connected. Um, there might be a question uh, why the correct tank. Um, and this is because of um, we are starting to mill titanium preform abutments um, with our machine. And therefore, a different tank is necessary because we need another coolant uh, for the preformed titanium abutments. We're using the blanks from Identica uh, for this. Uh, they don't have FDA approvals and as soon as we have um, FDA approval or Medentica has FDA approval uh, for the blanks, uh, we will release this uh, in the United States um, as well. Thank you very much for your um, attention. I hope you like the new features uh, of the CAM Software 16. Thank you very much for listening.